All right, so you have your little private session apparently with TLA Plus. So I think it's being recorded. So there might be people on the web interested. So, but it will be really, really hard for me to address a group since there's only one person sitting at the table right now. Um, but since we have this little private area, uh, could you maybe tell me like what's your, because maybe we could just, because you know, given the settings that we have, maybe we can skip ahead or like we can adjust to whatever you need. So do you have any um, experience with TLA Plus? Have you seen it before? Do you know what it is? No, uh, I just have like a brief overview of what okay. it's about and I would like to actually... This is, this is great. So this is, this is perfectly the workshop created for you. Um, so yeah, so let's get started. I, I forgot my clicker, so I'll have to stand near my computer. But like this is like a, I created like too long did the watch version for people who might be actually looking at the video right now. So this workshop is about TLA, which is a specific specification language. Um, TLA comes with tools that allow you to formally verify that specification is correct. So one thing TLA, TLA was created just to sp specify the algorithms, distributed algorithms. But then along the way, some other PhD developers created a tooling surrounding that specification. So now that specification can actually be verified that it is correct. So not only you can specify your algorithm, which you could normally do on a whiteboard if you want, right? But now also think of it as a magical, you know, unicorn with wings comes along to your whiteboard and tells you, yeah, this is nice, but your design will break on this corner case. So this is what the tooling actually gives you. And um, just the focus of if my design uh, works. And in this six hour workshop, we'll be not able to cover everything from TLA plus, but my, what I would like to achieve is that to give you a solid ground foundations on which you can already can go back to work and you, you, you can potentially um, have it something useful at work from this workshop. So the way I see it is it gives you enough fundamentals to build your first specification, especially if you work in any distributed system, but like you have two services and they communicate and you have something on your whiteboard, some, some you know, potential future feature for your project. And now you, can, you will be able to formally verify that this project has, uh, has sense. Do we have a second attendee? Yes, all right, now two people and potentially people watching the video. Hi, how are you? Uh, so can I ask you, since we have this little small group, like what's your background with TLA Plus? Like, do you know anything about it? Have you played with it? Well, I just graduated. Okay. So okay, so, but you haven't seen TLA Plus before. No. Okay, this is great because this is a workshop for you. Okay, so the TLDR version of it is that this T, the, 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 the TLA Plus is a specification language, so it allows you to specify, yes, the third attendee, this is amazing. You're hopefully for the right culture, right? Or you're yeah, just yeah. passing by <laughs> looking for toilet or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, should we just wait maybe like two minutes? Yeah, or the keynote, yeah, keynote hasn't finished. Keynote hasn't finished. No, they haven't come out yet. Oh, well, nobody told me that. Yeah. So you guys are okay with we just, we just, I will just roll back the slides. Yeah. Yeah, and then we, we start over when like people are actually here. All right. So where did you graduate from? Uh, University. Oh, nice. And um, so, uh, what's your background with TLA Plus? Do have uh, you seen it before? Background. Like, have you seen it before? Play with it? Have you heard about it? Yeah, I just heard about form verification. Okay. Um, I actually, I looked at the book, one of the books. Yeah. yeah. I think it might have been Lamport's book yesterday. Let's really quickly glance through it. Yeah, Apparently, screen. Keynote hasn't finished yet. Yeah, so I we should. Yeah, yeah. So should I just turn it off right now for just to no, save battery? No, I mean, it, I mean, and we will still wait for other people. Just, just leave it on. Just, you know, okay. Just ready to go. Yeah, I found that out too. I'm like, where is it? Oh, yeah. still. <laughs> I thought I, I thought I'd head down. Um, and so I thought, then I saw you going. I thought, oh, you already started, but yeah, <laughs> I almost come out of that room. With it. I see. 
So when did when did that keynote start? At at nine? Yeah, it, it, it started a little later. Oh. Well, I guess we have time. Well, six hours is plenty. <laughs> I think he's a Spark workshop. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You do everything, Yeah, I just, uh, I motivate myself with workshops. So yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Should we, should we install it? Oh, yeah, it's actually a good thing. Yeah, uh, because we, while we're being, people are waiting. If you go to that, actually on the general, do you have access to Slack, everyone? Yeah, so on the general channel, there I've posted, like, I think like yesterday, uh, a description what needs to be installed. Uh, apparently, the tool that then there's like a single link. Uh, that's it over here. Uh, so uh, you need to install TLA Plus Toolbox, and I and I gave you the link to that toolbox. However, apparently, the most recent release doesn't work with Java 11. So what uh, Chris Allen did, he he posted a link to a nightly build um of toolbox which will work with uh with latest version of of, of java oh. so you either either download so the, depending of what java you have in your system uh if you have java installed on your system that's actually a, also a good point but if you have like uh if you have mac and you do like you know brew install java java most likely you will get uh you get the latest version so then install the toolbox from uh from the nightly build and we have a Mac version, right? Zip. The installation should be straightforward. And what you need to, uh, eventually like, when you have it running, you will see something that looks like this, pretty much. That's what it is. If you have issues installing, let me know, so we can work it through. Do you have to toolbox install them? Yeah. Okay. At Mac, on Mac, it should definitely be straightforward. But, oh, do you, are you running Ubuntu or like Linux or? I spoke it's, it's on Linux, but it's, it was simple. It was simple, okay. It's, it's, just, it's just Java, so it's actually Eclipse. It's a thing I haven't seen for like at least nine years. So it still exists, yeah. No, but it's horrible. I've actually, I, I, you guys will be seeing. So on that toolbox, you are able to write specifications, but what you will find me do is I jump to Emacs, where I just, I'm more productive, and it's just better experience. I only use toolbox to run this stuff, but also the, I'm actually working it right now that, so that I could be able to run specifications directly from Emacs, because this tool is okay, but it's too, too, mu too much of, Clicking the mouse and, and yeah, write like a spec. exactly, exactly. What so the, hmm? the like, was that? Which it was general, but I can. Yeah, I can. So we we have we have a room for we have a channel for this room. Oh, you just did that. Awesome. Thank you very much. Oh, so the uh, so the person who was supposed to do the closure workshop apparently didn't get his visa, so they had to cancel that workshop, and I'm doing the one instead. So there's no closure workshop. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I apologize. Is it wasn't great for me as well. I had like five days to prepare it. So. Last curtain.
Right, so guys, do you know if if, um, if keynote ended? Mm -hmm. It's ended, okay. So this is TLA plus. Yeah, but like, I guess let's start like two minutes. In two minutes, is that okay? Maybe five. I don't know. So do you guys have toolbox installed? Sorry, do you have TLA toolbox installed? Have you seen the instructions how to install it? Do you have access to Slack channel? On the general channel. On the general channel, you will find, or even right now we have this, our room Slack channel, and there's a link to the description of what you need to install. Now, the current release doesn't work with, current release, hello. How's it going? Hey, man. Go, okay, guys. Or maybe let me just, I'll wait for other people. We can adjust the tables where, however we want. The only issue is how you're gonna get your, you know, power. That's the only, I guess, the only concern. Do you see the screen from? Sorry, do you see the screen from from where you're standing? Yes, you can see that. Is it okay. reflected in? It's a reflective, yeah. Whatever I. You, yeah, there's a Slack. I think everybody's here right now, right? Yeah, I can get into the Slack. You can it's get. Why your account has been deactivated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So. So, right. there's, there's one single thing that you guys need to install, and that is called TLA plus toolbox. Uh, on this room E1B11 channel, uh, we have a link to description like what, it needs to, what there needs to be installed. Uh, a note to people who are using latest Java, so like Java, because the toolbox is a Java application, so if you're using latest Java, apparently the latest release doesn't, uh, let me show you, doesn't really work with the latest Java, so what you can do instead is you can go, Chris Allen, in that thread posted here a link to a nightly build, which apparently works okay with the latest Java. So you can you can install the the official release which I've linked here, but that will not work with JDK 11. Uh, so Java 11 uh, nightly build should work just fine. Are you guys comfortable there? Could, should I? Maybe you should just ask organizers for more rooms. Do you think uh, for more tables? Do you think? All right, so one more time. The channel name is called Room E1B11. Like you have it here on the whiteboard, I guess. And there's a link to a message that I've posted actually on the general channel. And the only thing that you have to install is TLA Plus Toolbox. You can probably also just Google it. So TLA Plus Toolbox github i guess and go to that link 
and there will be probably some releases let me let me just find it releases there's an official release but do we have nightly release that's a good question okay To what? What's the latest? If you go to the latest release at the bottom of the release notes, it has. Oh, okay. So if I go, if I go to releases, and there's like a link to nightly. Yeah. All right. There it is. All right. So guys, so for people who don't have toolbox, uh, what you need to do is just Google TLA. Google TLA plus toolbox GitHub that gets you to the TLA plus GitHub project where you click on the TLA plus uh, sub project and then under releases here under releases you will find the latest release which you can install if you have Java older than Java 11 but if you have the latest Java which you can find by just typing Java dash version if you do have Java 11 then uh, then consider using the nightly build, which is on the bottom here, recent toolbox nightly build. And if you click on that, that will give you uh, executables for different systems, Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Any other questions regarding it? So could we, how, how, raise of hands who still doesn't have toolbox installed? Okay. Do you need like, for people who raise their hand, who is struggling finding where the installation is and installing it? Oh, uh, if you just if you if you go to your terminal and you do something like you know Java dash version. It no. Oh really. You sure it's the Java? <laughs> you don't need you if you have eight, then you're good with official release. Yeah, I'm I'm working on eight. But if you have eleven and most people might have if you don't do Java for a living, right? Then um, or any JDK stuff, then you might have just the latest version of Java and then you you will not have the toolbox latest release of toolbox working, you will need the one from the nightly build. So for people, from people who are raise their hands, how many of you have issues like installing, or can we just start with the workshop and if there will be problems with installation, you will let me know. How about we get to like the first exercise and then see how many people still are struggling with having toolbox? Does that make sense? Yeah. Awesome. Also important note, it used to be supposed to be a closure workshop TLA plus doesn't stand for closure. It's, uh, it's actually a different thing. Uh, unfortunately, the, the speaker couldn't make it be some, some uh, issues with, um, with Visa. So I stepped in with a workshop which was not ready five days ago. But now it's ready. I'm going to worry about it, hopefully. Uh, right. Um, OK, show of hands of people who have absolutely no idea what TLA plus is. Very good. People who have some idea but never seen it in action. All right, and people who actually played with TLA Plus. This is great, this is workshop for you. All right, so, uh, too long didn't watch. TLA Plus is a specification language. So what it means, it allows you to specify algorithms, especially it was created for distributed algorithms, but it can be for other algorithms as well. So just specifying what the algorithm does. It's that, this is just that formalization of what the algorithm should do. Um, and that what it was 20 years ago. Over time, generation of PhD students generated a lot of tooling around surrounding the specification language. And now the TLA plus comes with um, a tool that allows you to write formal proofs, which will we not be doing. But also it comes with a tool that allows you to formally verify that your specification works 
by just running it. Imagine that you whiteboard your solution at work. You have an idea about how your product should work. You spend a day whiteboarding, whiteboarding it. And then you have this little friend that will tell you, well, this is nice, but it will not work in this corner case. And it will give you a counter example of steps that will lead to an error in your system. And that part of TLA we're going to be focusing on this workshop. So making just answer the question, that's my solution that I whiteboarded actually makes sense. Uh, six hours is definitely not enough to learn about everything from TLA plus. Well, TLA plus is, uh, is just a specific language, specification language. Uh, it uses elements from different parts of math. So set theory, logic, temporal logic. Um, but there's so much to cover that I don't think we'll be able to cover everything. However, we should cover enough so that when you guys get back home and go to work next day, you will have, I hope, enough knowledge to actually look at the whatever you guys are working on at the given moment and try to specify it in TLA Plus and see if it actually makes sense. Nice thing about TLA Plus is that the specification, the level of detail that you have to put into the specific specification completely depends on you. So if I have a system that, let's say, exchange messages, it's for me to decide how I, what kind of abstraction I will create for describing that messages being uh, passed between processes. It might be just I have a little set where messages happen to pop out and disappear, or maybe I will try to even like describe how, how TCP works if I'm crazy enough. It up to, it's up to us developers to, to kind of make an idea what's, what's good for the given spec. Uh, but that, that is to come. Now, um, Leslie Lamport, who created TLA Plus, has an amazing workshop a video course, which is available online. Uh, you can watch it as well. Uh, however, his approach, I think, to showing how TLA Plus is going to be something similar to what I did, but I, I kind of approach it a little bit differently. So Leslie Lamport approached approach this workshop with already existing uh, well-known in the literature, uh, algorithm, distributed algorithms like Paxos or Paxos commit or two-phase Paxos. And on top of that, he tries to build a specification for that. And then he exposed the attend, like people who are watching his videos to different elements of the syntax. I, I, I designed this workshop to work a little bit differently. So we will start with a lot simpler examples. You might be even wonder, wondering like, so the, is that it? Is that what TLA plus is for? No. The examples themselves are really trivial, at least for the majority of this workshop, so that we can just purely focus on the syntax, so that syntax makes sense, that we get grasp, grasp the understanding of the elements of temporal logic, because that's something that probably a lot of you might be uh, not familiar with. And then at the very end, I hope for the like, maybe last 40 minutes, I will show you, given the knowledge that you guys are going to get, I will show you the uh, the specifications, like for example, the spec that I did for my company. I work for, I work for Archain, which is like yet is yet another blockchain, obviously, uh, because what else we can do uh, <laughs> in 2019? Uh, but no, it's uh, it, Archain itself is sort of um, it, it kind of I think it is bringing a lot of new stuff to the to that space of like blockchain themselves, especially it's trying to do like proof of proof of stake. And a lot of things were just new and unknown and were implemented for the first time. And uh, I started specifying parts of our protocol in TLA Plus while learning TLA Plus, and it gave us great results. It actually found two bugs, which if you look at them, you think, oh, they're trivial, but no, none of the developers actually thought about them before. Um, right, so this is now right now the last chance to leave the room and go to other workshop. Um, but from the race of, like, this slide is basically for people who maybe watched at the Leslie Lampert videos before, for you guys that that first three hours of this workshop would be just boring because that would just, we will go through the elements of the syntax. Um, this, is, this is the quote from the, when this workshop, I actually, I actually had a, a presentation about TLA plus and we switched to workshop, but when that presentation was accepted, I got this 
I comment from one of the reviewers from Lambda.com that TLA plus is the easiest and effectful way to start journey with formal methods, and I can, and I, I cannot agree more with that. It's, it's, it perfectly sums up what TLA plus is. So if you want to start do formal formal methods, that's probably one of the easiest way to. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Well, depends where you're styling. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Um, so first, so first, we will have to ask ourselves what are formal methods and essentially why we need them. Um, this is like an introduction, maybe to why I got first excited with TLA plus. Uh, I will, uh, however, so this is like part. The first part of this workshop. Uh, is, is just part of the, the presentation that I was supposed to be doing the next day. I'll try to go through that part as, as fast as I can because this is basically a workshop. Uh, by the way, you guys will be writing a lot of code in TLA+. You will not learn TLA+, just by watching. Uh, but let, let me quickly just go through those slides. I tried to do it like if within 15 minutes or maybe 20, if that's even possible. So why do we need formal methods? Let's, before we ask what those are, let's try to ask why do we need them as software engineers? So by the way, uh, raise of hands, people who call themselves software engineers or developers. All right, majority people in this room. All right, so I think everything runs on software right now and, and everything is broken beyond repair. That's, that's the way I see right now, 2019. And uh, just to give you, uh, give you the, my set of my mind, right now the premium car works on 100 million lines of code. That's 70 to 100 microprocessors which run independently and connect over the um, uh, event bus. So that's basically you run, a, you run on the quite huge distributed system. Every software engineer who sees this slide should next day sell their car. Yes. Right? Uh, and you might be thinking, come on, like, you know, uh, mobile, like automobile industry, like, we, you kind of get this, this notion that they are always stable, like, things don't break. But just so you know, this is Cherokee, Jeep Cherokee, which those two white hackers broke into just over that little, like, you know, you have your navigation system, and you can update that navigation system with the latest maps. That's what they used to hack into that, that, uh, that, that car. And you can control everything. It used to be that the car, like if you put your, your foot on the pedal, it was like some machinery behind it so that your engine goes faster. You don't need to have Tesla right now. Every, every modern car, that's basically software telling, oh, we need to go faster, we need to go slower. But that runs purely on software. And they crashed that car by accident with the, with the journalist from the Wire, Wire magazine. Um, but they based their work on, on the paper which was published by a few researchers and the methods they applied, they applied not only to Jeep Cherokee, mostly to most of the cars. I don't have to remind you about Toyota and their unintended acceleration, right? When they found eventually after, I think it was like three years of investigation, like this many ways of actually get into that potential leak and unintended acceleration and people actually died. I love US, like you guys have a lot of stuff in running software, but unfortunately this is becoming a pain. Like 9-11, Seattle 2013, 9-11 call was not working for the whole freaking night and part of the day. And the reason for that, that actually was a company that was running it in Colorado, and they had software. And the way the software was, was implemented, is they had a counter that was counting number of calls that the system was, was working on. Uh, unfortunately, that counter was was being used also to create new identifiers for the calls. So you know you know how integers are actually limited in size. Apparently, they didn't know about it. So uh, at some point, it just went to negative number, and thing, things were completely bizarre. My my best example of like how we are screwed right now in this century, at every everything runs in software, is July 8, 2015. In the morning, the trading, um, the, the stock exchange trade in, in New York stopped working. Uh, exactly the same moment, Seattle's 911 went down one more time. Uh, United Airlines were completely grounded because one of their systems would not, was completely not responding. And at that time, people in your government were like, were like, well, this is like in the movies, like maybe we are actually being hacked. And there was an investigation. <laughs> Like, you know, FBI, CIA, whatnot, I don't know. And it turns out it was just coincidence. 
<laughs> because software just breaks. And you know, we, I, I, I fear that we live in this area, uh, era that everything lands in software. And yes, you might have issues tightening up your Nikes or whatever sneakers those are because the, you had a bug in your latest update. But, but think about it for a minute, right? It used to be that the software we created, like, you know, the software in the 80s when I was this big, um, was not really available everywhere, was like parts of the systems running on software, and it wasn't really that complex and didn't have that many users using it. It's just exploding with usage every year, and it's becoming part of everything that I do. I, I read my papers, I connect with software, like, I couldn't think of things that I, I even look at my watch and it's still software, right? My grandma has an SOS button on her mobile phone. What happens if it doesn't work? And you might be thinking, yeah, but come on, I'm doing just a web application, right? Because that's probably majority of us. Well, blockchain and web application, what can go wrong, right? Because like, you know, we, we come with this, with this attitude that, you know, just don't deploy on Friday. Things should be fine. <laughs> We always have backup, right? And things will be good. Um, yeah, and I, you might be thinking, I'm not, this is like famous from 80s, uh, Tech Rec 25 or something, I don't remember the name, but a medical radiation tool that was supposed to fight cancer, but they had a bug and it, was, it killed five people. Just give them like a Chernobyl in one room in, in one day. It's, it's not funny. Or, or the famous Boeing right now. But you might be thinking, this is not the software that I write, right? I'm not. Boeing engineer or whatever. But think about it this way. This is like from, from last week. 19 kids committed suicide in India. Most like this is not directly connected, but it's suspicious because, well, they, had a, they were having exams and there was a bug in the system that was making um, grades for different students taking that exam. And there was a bug and few people didn't get the right marks and were not, they didn't get to their schools or universities where they're supposed to get. And they killed themselves. You might be working in a financial institution. Think about it this way. What happens if somebody sees a credit card with this tremendous debt? You might be responsible. You not, might not, not be writing a Tesla engine or whatever, and you're still, your work right now, because software runs everywhere, might influence a lot of people. And we should start thinking about it. Think about Pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceuticals, the, the industry, one, more than 100 years ago, was progressing as hell. They were creating cure after cure. A lot of diseases were disappearing, but they got overexcited. And there were vaccines who would kill like 30 kids because they were not tested good enough. And even though the industry was progressing as hell, some people got, died. And eventually, the society said, that's enough. And the government said that that's enough. And now, if you ever worked for, for pharmaceutical company, I did, the, a lot, the, the amount of legislation, the amount of formalism that they have to go through to even send a freaking email from colleague to colleague, is just horrible. Think about it. If, you're, if you're, 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 you want to have your kid, kid, kid being a, a software engineer, and then in the next generation, they will have to go through exam and they will have to do the waterfall because that's the only way to certify way of writing software. And there's no progress because people are just scared to do progress. I think it's the right moment for us to kind of think about it and maybe act till it is too late. And the problem is that the software that we write is just too complex. It, it's not like the 80s anymore. It doesn't fit in, in your little floppy disk and it's just impossible to intellectually manage. There will people be like Uncle Bob who will tell you that yet there is a problem, but we don't need tooling. All we need is a discipline. And, um, and, I, think, <laughs> and I think that's, that's bullcrap. We actually need, like, we need uh, more tooling. And the, like, Haile Wayne said a really funny thing. He said, like, Uncle Bob says test the same way as a Smurf says smooth. He, tests, he says test for everything. And I truly believe that tests are the one of the good things that happened to the industry over the last 15 years, like test-driven development was adapted. We ran tests on continu continuous integration. But I'm just saying that's not enough. And that's just to give you a really quick, a really quick example is this, is this um, wiki page from, uh, this is from 2001. This is at the time where Agile was still, everybody was still ex excited about extreme programming. 
and they had this little forum where each week somebody would come up with a problem and the challenge was to write tests that will find that issue. So there was a guy who created a very simple problem. So this is just two methods. One is putting elements to the buffer. The other one is removing elements from the, from the buffer. The buffer is limited on size, so the threads has to wait, like have to wait, so the consumers have to have to consume elements from the buffer while the producers produce to it. And he said, like, listen, create a test that will find. There is a bug. That's what he said. Create a test that will find that bug. And uh, here's the challenge. And after two weeks, uh, a people who were already considered guru at, at that time in that area of writing unit tests and all what, whatnot, they were just getting angry. They said, like, there's no bug. I cannot find bug in it. This software is correct. So after two weeks, the guy said, like, OK. And he gave them the sequence of steps that will make this software deadlocked. So the threads would be deck locked between each other and the, the execution would just stop. And, and they all agree, okay, there is a bug. So here's said, so here's that this challenge still, still exists. Given that you right now know what are the exact steps that need to happen, write a test that will find it, that, that particular bug. So one guy did, and he, when he started working on it, he measured with Clark, how much time he, you know, his free leisure time, he, he used that for eventually find it. It took him 16 hours of pure work to find one single test that was running, I think, 11 threads. And if that test was executed 200 times, there was a 50 chance probability it will explode of an error. So I would say tests will not always save you. And we need other tools that will. And here are the slower loader and savior formal methods. So formal methods are mathematical approaches for software development with support of rigorous specification design and verification of computer systems. That tells me fancy, fancy math, math, fancy. I can, I can sound smart in the room. Um, so that was an actually an interesting, an interesting, um, this is, this is just a paper from how do you call it? That experiment. It was a grant. It was a grant from DARPA, and they did this in 2015. I will not I'll go over all of the details. I do I encourage you guys to read the paper because it's really fun to read, like how it all happened, the whole like how how the execution of the whole this whole experiment went. Uh, but I will just give you um, some cool cool elements from it. So. At that time, the military in the US was already using this helicopter that was uh, designed by Boeing. It was already used, being used in the field. This helicopter, is, uh, his nice feature is that not only it can, it can take two passengers on it, but it can also fly autonomously. So you can have a pilot somewhere in your base, and the helicopter will go to the whatever field on the battlefield, pick up elements, and come back. And just, you know, it's a, it's a Tesla that flies for the military. And what at the beginning of this grant, because this grant was supposed to prove that you can eliminate exploitable bugs using formal methods. So what they did before they started anything, they took this Boeing machine and they hired uh, white hackers specifically for this. Researchers hired, hired a, a spe specific team and asked them, you have a six weeks to hack into this Boeing. It took them less than seven days to completely take control over this thing. Completely, they could do everything, fly it, you know, flip it. And, um, and um, so for, for, over, for over the next 18 months, uh, the researchers worked with Boeing engineers because Boeing engineers were surprised, really, because they, it's not like Boeing has a contract with military and they'll just write you any software and, and they're like, you know, maybe it will work. They were certain that it's not exploitable. It took less, less than a week to make you know, Boeing engineers to sound smart, to be really, really confused. But then, over the next 18 months, they, they've, uh, they started working on a new system, new operating system for, for this hardware. And using formal methods, they were able to create software which was unhackable. The same white, the same white team, uh, so white hackers, white head hackers, uh, were unable to hack it, even though they had access to all the software, they had access to all the design decisions that the, that the industry did. And also interesting is that the Boeing, engi Boeing engineers wrote that software 
the researchers were only helping out with knowledge transfer. So you might be thinking, you know, this is, this is, this is great, right? Like formal methods, this is awesome. And like, why people are not using it constantly? Well, the problem is that, you know, you know how, okay, so this diagram shows different, different techniques from formal methods. And so on the uh, Y axis, you get like how much guarantee you get from that technique. And on the X axis is how, like how many PhD, PhD years per, per thousand of lines of code, right? And, and things like type systems, so like, uh, you know, Haskell or maybe, you know, Idris or Agda, it's considered the less, you know, not that really complex and doesn't give you that many guarantees. Things which are, which they were using were somewhere around here. And now if you think about it, if you write proofs from the software, consider, consider for a minute that you have a language that allows you to do that. And consider that you have enough knowledge to actually do it. Like you, you gain that magically this number of PhD, PhD years. Um, now, how we write software is unfortunately connected to, to the industry, like how we design the system themselves. Uh, how many of you guys wrote a piece of code and then the client came back to you, he said like, well, it's not really what we were looking for. We actually need to change this and that. And that's okay, we are agile, right? Right now for the last 20 years. And that's okay because software is, by its name, soft, we can adjust. Um, but if you were to write a formal proof, like an actual deduction or whatever proof for every little piece that you have to change that over the next day, you, your, your day would not be happy and maybe you would quit industry. So, so that's, that's a problem. And as it turns out, formal methods are really good for things which are well understood, like security bugs. Security, like elements of like security are well understood and they will not, the requirements for security of your system will not change over, you know, your, your customer will not get excited with like, Maybe I, I would like to have this little exploit in my system because I'm adventurous. Most likely they want to have a system secure and we understand what that means. And then you can write this, this little part of the software uh, can actually be formally verified. But everything else, I, I would argue it might be difficult, especially with the tooling that we have right now. Things are evolving and things are changing. So there might be, maybe in time we will get languages where proofs are really go tightly with the implementation and it will be just a natural way of writing software. But given how long it took to start writing tests in parallel to implementation, uh, I guess it's still ahead of us. So to sum it up, software is everywhere. It's too complex and to comprehend. Things will break. And there's nothing we can do about it. That's actually it. <laughs> we can go home. All right. So yeah, there's, <laughs> so there's hope. Uh, there is a distinction, it's not well defined, I guess, but it's slowly, slowly uh, the distinction is being made between code verification, so the things that I've been talking right now for the last five minutes, and system verification. So what I mean by that is that when I start, write, when I start coding, I already have designed for what I'm gonna code prepared. It might be, it's just in my head. I had a conversation with my colleague over coffee. Like it's been 9 a.m. in the morning. Stand up, it's over. That's good. And, um, and we had a conversation. So I'm going to hack this service and you're going to hack that one. I'm going to, I'm going to send you that message. I'm going to receive that. I'm going to respond. That's already a design. Maybe it's not completely formal, right? It just happened to be happened over coffee in the kitchen. Maybe we draw something on a whiteboard. Maybe you guys actually have a documentation where you specified something le le more or less formal, but no matter where you are in this spectrum from, from not having specified at all anything, we just had a conversation or maybe had a conversation just with myself, um, or I had a, I actually some, have some formal documentation, the design exists. You already know what you're gonna write, right? Is that that you, open to up your ID or text and then you just start typing and maybe it will compile and maybe eventually by lunch it will be what we need. You know what you're going to wrote. You, do, you have a general understanding. You have a general idea what would you like to create and now you're just transforming that idea to software. There might be still some 
holes to be filled because there are some places which you don't know how you're going to approach, but you hope it will pop out eventually while you write code. But overall understanding what you're going to do is already in your head. Now, TLA system verification, and this is the old space of where TLA plus lives, is before you start writing code, you want to verify whether that idea that you had for your system actually makes sense. So the same way I, I, did, I said at the very beginning, when you had that whiteboard and you, you draw that box, of, here's my billing system, and then we, I send the invoice to that system, and that system responds. It's already a distributed system, and you might start be having a discussion with your colleagues, like, well, what happens if that message gets dropped? Or like, if this buffer, Kafka, apparently starts, you know, does something crazy. You might have the, you might start thinking with your colleagues being senior developers about different corner cases of your design before you start writing software. Do you do that or you just start typing? Like, depends, right? Maybe you just start typing. How many of you guys actually write software in your garage and you want to be like, are you actually like, I don't know. I think it's like a, a natural thing that to, to essentially to do. And system verification will do that for you. We'll try to find a bug in, in the, the idea itself before you start writing software. Uh, when I speak with my friends and colleagues about it, they always say like, and I can, I can relate to that. They're being coders and hackers. They, they just prefer writing code. And they're like, I will have tests that will find that error. I will have, I will have maybe some tooling around it. But I will argue that with TLA Plus, if you get enough uh, experience with it, you will write a specification a lot faster than you would write any of that code that would essentially check that. And um, here is just like a, some, we will skip that, but here's like an, a very simple banking system that, that has a bug. Maybe we'll get back to it, but I was just trying to show that there might be ideas about how the software will work which will look good on paper, but will break on production. And you, you have to actually have a production system. You need to have different systems running in parallel, need different threads, different clients connecting to the same system, different threads accessing the same resource to essentially uh, hit that error, hit that corner case. How many of you guys are familiar with works on my machine, right? But it doesn't work on production. So no matter how good your code is, it's, you know, that banking system, like it was trivial. Imagine that you have a, an actor system and you have a client connecting to that bank account and he said like, I want to send $2 to Alice. And there's like a validation happening. Does this guy have $2? Yes, he has. So we subtract from his account and then we push a message over the actor like Airline or Akka, whatever you use. And that message arrives to the second actor and he's like, oh good, I have $2 and now they have, you know, she has 12 and he has eight, all works fine. Where the, where the potential issue is, do you guys know? Like, can you guys see it immediately? Drop yeah. message. Drop message, right? Like that's the easiest thing that we could think of. Multiple clients doing the same thing at the same time. So somebody could perfectly design the system with all the tests and the test will not catch that error and things will break on production. And hopefully by the end of this workshop, we will actually see a spec that fits in one page that shows that system that it actually breaks. All right, TLA Plus was created by Leslie Lampert. Who, know, who, who is not familiar with Leslie Lampert? Okay, so Leslie Lampert is an alien <laughs> or, or a lep, or, you know, like lizard or whatever. Like, I don't know how he does it, but are you guys familiar with, well, okay, let's say, if you use LaTeX, that's what he created. If you're familiar with consistent distribu um, getting uh, consistent in distributed systems, uh, his work on uh, Byzant uh, Byzantine generals getting, uh, um, how's the name? What's the name of the problem? Byzantine general, yeah. Like we're two generals trying to attack the same camp and they, they need to coordinate their attack. Uh, Paxos algorithm, uh, TLA plus itself. Like this guy is, like he does a lot of stuff. He's very opinionated. But at the same time, you will ask him a question on Google Groups and he responds immediately with something that could be considered a blog post. So I find it really, really cool. And uh, he has a TLA workshop lectures available online where he wears different hats. 
And that's one of the screenshots from that workshop. But enough about the Leslie Lampard. Consider him a smart guy who, who happened to came up with this idea. Well, you think about it. Leslie Lampert came up with Paxos, so distributed algorithm to, uh, to agree on a value in a distributed system at the time where this problem wasn't really considered a problem yet. It was more considered an academic problem, not really a, an industry problem. Guy wrote his paper, the first paper, like he did this, this description of some, there is actually a, a Paxos island in, in Greece, but he made this an idea about archaeological discoveries of some ancient civilization on that on that island and they had this protocol how to agree in Senate over some legislation and he spends like this tremendous amount of you know description and writing to describe his algorithm nobody understood that he, he was making lectures dressed up as Indiana Jones everybody under remembered the Al Indiana Jones outfit nobody understood the, 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 the protocol then he brought Paxos made simple, which was supposed to be simple in plain English, but apparently if you are a very good researcher, you're maybe not that good with words. So at some point he was like, enough is enough, I have to create a specification language that will be just English is stupid. So instead of improving, I guess, his English, he just wrote a specification language because that's what hackers do. And that's how we came up with TLA+. So what is a TLA+, is a specification language that allows you to describe distributed algorithms, uh, I love building an abstraction. So a lot of people who are not familiar with TLA plus, they, they tend to say that they, a lot of things that they gain from TLA plus is they start thinking differently about the system. They, that allows us, allows them to think more abstract, abstractly. We have more abstraction. I'm sorry, my English is bad, but it, it allows them to, to build an abstraction of the system that they built in their head, a battle mod, a battle model, model. And, uh, and, TLA plus, the way it achieves that, it is allows to describe an algorithm as a sequence of steps. And now, when I say that, this, this should sound weird, right? Because I just said distributed algorithms, and then I said define algorithms as a se uh, sequence of steps. Does anybody have a problem with that? Like, Two things going on at once, and, and then I have a specification that talks about, about sequence of steps, where apparently you can define any, pro, any uh, concurrent program as a sequence of steps. So I, I prepared yesterday a, uh, a small example. So think about this, this little uh, sequential program that starts in its state in it, goes to at some point to running, and at some point it transitions to stop. Sequence of steps, nothing really that fancy, right? And we can understand that this is a sequential program that eventually terminates in that state stopped. But what if I have a system that has two of those guys running in parallel? Can I represent that as a sequence of steps? And apparently, I can do, is that font good enough for you guys? From where you said, is that okay? More or less? We can maybe rearrange the room right there, like during the break. By the way, the breaks, I forgot. I tend to speak a lot, my, my wife hates it. So you have to tell me it's time for a break, okay? Because I might forget about it like six days later. Uh, so, so you tell me, you know, Pavo, it's kind of enough. Oh, if you have problems pronouncing my name, Pavo, I know like it, it might just go with Paul or that guy and I will be like, okay, that's probably me. Um, all right, this is how I can represent those two separate sequential programs running in parallel. So each of them went from init to running to stop. But now I can say I have two which are in init state and then maybe one will go to running and the first one stays in, in init or maybe the first one goes to, a uh, second one goes to running while the second one stayed in it. And then they can go to running or like different steps can happen. Eventually they all transition to both being stopped. But we can represent a system that runs in parallel as a sequence of steps. It just looks like that. Does it, does it kind of make sense? Yes? It's, it's, that makes sense, but it seems like you're also going to deal with combinatorial explosion. Like yeah. You have three steps here. Oh. Oh, yeah. Four, and that's oh, yeah. So much more complex. So, like, how do you. It explodes with numbers of steps. 
And that's one of the issues, and we're going to talk about it, but maybe I'll just go a little bit. Yeah, so to answer your question really quickly, yes, that's like one of the main issues of running Telex Tele Plus, where you have a pretty much what you can consider a brute forcer, which just goes through all those possible states. But the nice thing about it is that this problem is, how do you call it? It's easy to run in parallel. You can map produce it if you want. And, uh, and I, one thing that our industry is good at is I think is if like things are, a, we can able to run it in parallel, we, we can pretty, pretty, much, pretty much find ways to run it quickly. And TLA Plus actually will come with a tooling, it comes with a tooling right now, which allows you to spin instances of like Digital Ocean or AWS runs the spec in parallel, bring back, come back with results, and kills, and kills, the, kills the, um, the network of nodes. So, but yes, the number of, uh, number of possible states explodes and, and sometimes for more complex stuff is just too much. So you will also build, you have ability in the tooling to say, I'm only interested in that area of that space. Don't, like for example, you can, you, you might say you have, let's say you have an actor, like an actor or airline actor, and they have a queue of messages, which can grow infinitely, I guess, till, like, till your memory explodes. But when you explore possible issues, you, you might say, oh, I'm only considering scenarios where that queue only has three elements or less, which obviously may happen that you have a bug where your queue ends up with 10 elements and you will not find that back. So that's this trying to find ratio between um, the correctness and uh, robustness of your form of verification versus the uh, speed of how fast you want to get the results back. If um, TLI plus the aspects who are known to run for, for a day. Uh, yeah, for, but, but for bigger systems, like on a single machine, right? But that's not something uh, unusual for production ready specs. You said that it's a sequence of steps, but that looks to me much more like a grid of steps, so I would think that a sequence is something with just one set of hours. Well, because if you look at it, what happened was this shows you all possible sequences of how the execution of your program could go. Like, this, is the, this, is, this represents the whole space of all possible executions of your software. So. And uh, okay, we can we can so in in TLA plus we let's let's talk about the vocabulary maybe it's a very good question so we rep, we kind of see this as a transitions of within sort of like a state machine where we have different states we have different variables and they change over time and if you go through one of those like paths that is a considered a behavior so a behavior is a sequence of steps and what TLA plus specification builds up the definition of, or definition of all possible states. And the model checker, we're gonna talk about it, tries to explore that whole area. And while going through them, you put some invariants, you put some properties on, like you say, never in time I, my, my, my system will be in that state. Never in time I will have a overdrawn on a bank account, for example. But that, that just represents the whole possible states that may happen. Any questions with that? All right. So, so in TLA Plus, we represent math. Pretty much, we use math to write specifications. Uh, so that elements from some from set theory, from from logic, and and this pretty much this slide describes the core of what TLA Plus is. When you write the spec, you have to say what's the initial state like. Your system starts at some state. Well, for example, might be in this particular example, it starts in a state where its value of, I don't know, status is called in it. So that's one thing that you have to define, how your system, where, what's the initial state. And then you write a formula, huge function. And this, I think this is gonna, actually, this workshop might be really good for functional programmers to. To, to grasp the, the concept. I think the imperative programmers might have some difficulties because for us, this should be quite, quite straightforward. So you write a function which is called a next state formula. And what that function does, it is, takes as an argument, it take, takes two states, the one that you're in right now and the one you can possibly transition to. 
and you return true or false, whether this is legal to go from this state to that state or not. That's all you write until it's plus spec. So, so then, when the model checker event, like, I think I have a slide about it, yes. So we have a model checker, which will just explore that. It will start with that initial state that you defined, which he understands, and then he, he just tries to check different possible states and ask you constantly that next state formula, is it okay if I go here? No? Is it okay if I go here? Great! Whoop. Is it now okay to go here? No? No? Oh! Whoop. And then he just explores the whole vast area of possible states while doing that checks for correctness of your system. So the model checker is called TLC. Do you know what TLC stands for? You know what? Nobody knows. <laughs> Seriously, they forgot. It's, in, it's in, used in papers, but everybody in papers just use TLC. It's probably temporal logic checker, but nobody knows. And they only, they, everybody just now use TLC. TLC this, TLC that. Um, TLA stands for temporal logic of actions. And we will understand what that means, hopefully within the next two hours. So model checker is a brute forcer that explores all possible states for a given specification. All right? So that explores that area, um, checks for two different properties, safety and liveness. And we're going to talk about them in more detail. But this is, those, those are concepts which were in the 80s roughly defined, but then they have now concrete meaning. How many of you guys are familiar with what liveness, liveness and safety is in distributed systems? OK. so few people. Um, so those talk about two different, two different areas. Safety checks whether your other algorithm will not create something stupid. So let's say we have an algorithm that looks for a, uh, a leader. You are guys all processes in the distributed system, and we need to find a single leader in that system. Okay? A safety property might be we either have no leader yet found, so everybody assumes there's every process individually thinks there's no leader, or we all agree then that there is one leader, and that's, for example, you. Right? But, so that's safety. We guarantee that either this or that. I guess we, you don't produce incorrect results. But I could give you, so what's liveness? I could, for this, that algorithm to find a, a leader in a group of processes, I could give you an algorithm that would be safe but not life, and that would be an algorithm that does nothing. My algorithm just chills, right? It's good, it's like chilled, and it's completely safe for eternity. Because the rules were either we find a leader, a single leader, or there's no leader. And he's like, well, there's no leader, man. We're good. So liveness is a guarantee that over time things progress, that the algorithm moves towards the solution, however you define that. And there are formal ways to define it. So there are two different, uh, different properties of distributed systems. And we were going to see how T uh, TLC allows us to check for those. And as you mentioned, there's like a vast area of states that, that the system looks for, and it is possible for it to look, work for days. The examples that I work with, prepared for these workshops, are simple. So that also means that we'll get results within seconds, not minutes or, or hours, right? Uh, but that, this is that vast area. So the same example that we saw before, now free process is running. And now you can see how that slowly becomes bigger and bigger. All right, so now I have a demo for you, but I would like for you guys to, so this is a workshop. So I would really, really would hope if you guys were following along. I have examples prepared. I can just show you those examples. So, so this is how I prepare the workshop. If we are short of time, eventually at some point I will stop writing and then now we will just start exploring the code that I've written for you guys. But at least for now, I would hope that we start hacking together. Does that make sense? Okay, so who is still not having TLA toolbox installed? 
Everybody was together. So you, can you, like, everybody can open wherever that is. This? All right. So I have my little cheat sheets with me, but I hope I'll be fine without them. Um, but nevertheless, it's better to have them here. So what do we, okay, so if you have that toolbox, uh, what I'll be doing is I'll be switching between toolbox and my Emacs. And the only sole reason for that is this, I cannot write in, tool, in tool, the TLA toolbox. It's, it's an Eclipse environment and I have a history of Eclipse and I promised myself I will never run it and I'm running it on my machine. So, so but you can, you can work with TLA toolbox or you can switch to your favorite text editor. We will be using toolbox to run the model checker. Okay, but let, for now let's, Let's start. So well, the first thing that you have to do is you create a new file and you say open spec and add new spec. And the window pops out. Um, I know it's... Sure. Yeah, I cannot make font on Eclipse. I can do it on Emacs. Unfortunately, I cannot do it here. So like, try to stay with me and when you're lost, just shout, I'm lost. Okay? So you go to, to the menu, click on file, you click on open spec, you add add new spec, then the window pops out, new TLA plus specification, and there's a root module file, and you click on browse, and let's say I would like to, let's say I will create a folder here, we'll call it TLA W for TLA workshop, create, and hopefully, and in that folder I will create a, a file called simple. So if I click save, it recognizes this as it's going to be under my user rabbit TLAW simple.tla and specification name for it is, is simple. Okay, and I click on finish. And now, oh, let me, let me close all that. Sorry, go away. Now, you see, I don't have absolutely no idea how to, great. Yes, this is, this is essentially what I wanted. Thank you very much. Um, Right, so this opens a TLA, uh, TLA plus specification. Now, is it, does everybody has that? Who's still trying to get there? Oh, trying to install. Um, is it okay if we move along and maybe during the break I can, I can get you up to speed, I will maybe copy paste the, what I wrote? Okay, so how many, I just wanna know how many people will be following. I'm, I'm, I, if, you don't, if you don't wanna follow, you just wanna watch, that's okay. Uh, no, this is, this is crucial. If you just want to watch, that's fine. I think you will not get from this workshop as much as you would if you were just typing with me, but that's fine. I just want to know how many people are starting to type right now because I, I need to know if I'm going to be losing people. Or not. Okay, majority of you guys. Awesome. It is, and do you have that screen opened? Yep, okay. So I'll, I'll close all that later. I have absolutely no how to close that in one go. Um, anyway. Uh, is it also okay if I'll be jumping between Emacs? Yes, thank you very much. So uh, let's look from that file. That was TLA plus W and simple, and I have a mode for that. All right, so now that we have, we, what we would like to write is a specification that will represent that going from init to running to stop the sim simplest algorithm not even distributed one yet that we can think of, okay? So um, what we defined first is a variables that we will have in our system. In that case, that's only a status, okay? As you guys remember, we have to define two functions. Can you remind me what those functions were? Uh, variables, I think it has to be uppercase, but like for a keyword, but maybe it doesn't. I always go with default. I have absolutely no idea. So I called it status. It could be, you know, what it could be blah, right? Um, we want to define that process that goes from uh, in it to running to stop. So when I define a specification in TLA plus, oh, by the way, Lampert has absolutely no idea. I think what repository uh, Git, like Git is or any code revision repository are, and he keeps on insisting that we should have modification history in the specification. I think that's, that's what Git is for. Um, no, he wrote it before Git. He wrote it before Git, but then he works on it 
still, right? So, um, now, the more I get to see how Leslie Lampert works, like by reading especially the, the mailing list, I, I think that um, he's one of those hackers who just like to do things his way. Some, he thinks sometimes his way is better than the rest of the world. Um, I think there's like one chair over here. We need to reorganize this room during the break. All right, so you guys remember what we supposed to add? Like there were two functions we were supposed to create in specification. Can anyone tell me what those were? Initial state. Anyone? Initial state, exactly. So let's, say, let's call this function setup, all right? And we put two equal signs. That means that we define a function. Now, see that this function doesn't take arguments, but it actually does. But let's, we'll talk about it in a minute. So setup was supposed to set up our initial state. And our initial state is where, where this variable status is in it, right? Like in that. Do you guys remember the slides? Maybe I will just, I will just quickly go to those slides. We, we went from init to running to stop, correct? So, so what are we going to do is we're going to just say status equals init. That's, that's all it really is. It's initial state. And there was another function. I was called next. You can call it whatever you want, really. Let's call it for now next step, OK? And that function is telling us what should happen, right? We definitely, so let's work this slowly. Let's, let's consider a simple program that right now goes just from init to running, and then it stops, OK? So we now have to write a function that will represent that. We, as you guys remember, next step formula is a function that will take an existing state, so we, can, we have access to all the variables in existing state, and gives us a possible new state, so we access, have access to all variables in the next possible next state, and we have to return an answer whether this is true or false, whether this is possible to transition or not. So this is what we're going to say. We're going to say that the next step is possible if status is equal to init. Uh, sorry, not like that. Like that. Like that. Status is equal to init. <coughs> that, that only gives us access to that variable in the state where we are right now. But we won't like to say that the next state is going to be a state in which status is called running. Right? In that first line, you consider just a guard. Uh, what? Basically saying that like an if statement fails has to be in uh, Yeah, you kinda you will say that in a in a minute. But just just slowly, yes. Yes, it is a kinda like a guard. Um we are gonna build that gonna slowly gonna build that to that to that definition. And now I wanna say what's the next va variable of the next state is that I'll I will i will allow. So to access the variable value, this variable status in the next state, I will use I will use that name of that variable and how do you call this character in English? Prime, Prime. or tick. OK, tick. <coughs> so we say status tick. When you give a variable name and tick, that means you're referencing that variable in that next possible state. OK? So I can say status has to be in it. And, and this is a symbol of and in logic, right? And next status has to be running. <coughs> Sorry. The status prime thing, is, that, uh, is the language aware of that? Like the that's, prime means the next state? that's the syntax of the language. Okay. So if I have, if, my, if let's say my process would have another, uh, uh, another variable blah, I want to access the value of blah in the next state in that formula. I, I do the blah tick or the blah find. Can you look multiple states ahead? Can you like do? No, no, no. The function, the function implicitly takes just, so instead of doing uh, step one and step two, writing this like this, and you would be like, this is more familiar to, you know, like you would be like S1 status, right? right. And you would do like S2 status. Right? You, you, this, is, this looks more familiar like a programming language, right? 
but it, those two arguments are implicitly here. Those two parameters for those functions are implicitly here. The, the states they are currently in and the next state. And the next state formula only, only draws an edge between the next state. Doesn't draw like transition. Like you will have to build that transition. And look, this is in our example, right? Because we have to go from init to running and then right, from okay, running to stop. Sure. Right? So we, but does it make sense right now so far? So we're writing. So Lampert in his video lectures, I think, makes a horrible mistake. Yes, I said it on video. Um, <laughs> where he builds at the beginning a model that this is an imperative programming language where we have more or less like an if statement, like a status is an init, and then we assign value, value to a variable. Like this, this kind of means like we are assigning uh, a running to status, okay? But don't build that mental model in your head because it's gonna screw you later on when you start writing an actual production-ready specification. And Lampard later on says that, that this is not the, that's not true. I only help you guys transition. But I, given that we are on functional programming conference, I hope we can cope with a concept of a function that takes two arguments, right? A current status, current, sorry, current state where we are in, and there is a potential status as our argument, and we return a value, true or false, whether we can draw an arrow between the status uh, state we're in right now to that next state. And with tick, we get access to all the variables in this state, and without tick, we get access to all the variables that we have in this state. And we write a formula that returns a true or false. This weird thing here is end. So we're saying status here has to be in it and status here has to be running. And if that's the case, dear model checker, you can, you can draw that arrow and then you will be able to transition to that state and see what else is possible, okay? So what else is possible? If I transition right now from in it to running in that current spec, is that font big enough or do you want it bigger? We can go bigger. No. Okay. Bigger would be fine? Like, like that? Is that better? Okay. So, so given the spec that we have right now, if I go from here to here, what are the next possible states I can do? Can I go to status equals, like there's a next state that says status equals blah, blah. Can I go there? That my specification allows to do that? Or there's a status here that says, the, uh, so the state that says the status is stopped. Can I go there? Yeah. How? Why? But do you even see the word stop? Yeah, that no, would be. Not currently. Not currently. I'm talking about the current specification. Oh, okay. From the current spec, that's it. The program terminates here, right? As I said, we are writing the simplest programs as the ones you can think of, okay? We're purely focusing on TLA plus syntax. I promise I will try to show you something more complex at the end of this workshop, okay? But is it, are we agree right now that I just terminated, the program terminated here with that spec, with that algorithm? Okay, great. Right. Okay, so in this spec, we don't have, um, you haven't actually specified a, defin like a, a definition of like running other than that word status versus stop. So like, in my mind, this could be something like wild true, right? It's, it's a program that runs forever. Is there a notion in TLA for I want termination as a part of like... Yes, okay. we're going to talk about, but there's also a concept of stuttering, meaning that we haven't, really, I, I ended up here and there's like nothing to be done, but you know, I potentially be just not moving anymore. But like we can consider that like, maybe, you know what, let's, let's actually, maybe I will answer your question with actually running in TLA plus, right? So, so we have, let's go, let's go right now to our, to our uh, uh, toolbox. It will ask us to refresh that. And now we have that spec. Now, this is Eclipse. Let me try to figure out how I could actually, yes, thanks God. So this is just the spec. And now we would like, I know this is small, holy crap. There is some magic in Mac that I could zoom in, right? This is possible. Yeah. How do I do that? Control plus. <gasps> well, it, it zooms, zooms in this part. But, but that's, that's actually brilliant. Great. Do you guys, is it better right now? Yeah. But um, 
try to just stay with me on here in toolbox on your computers, all right? So now this is just a spec. And also, yeah, by the way, this, this, is, this is required that, you know, that module, and there's a name for the module that has to correlate to the name of the file. If it doesn't, uh, it will not parse the toolbox. So it will tell you it's not, it's not, uh, and we can, even, we can even do it right now. So if I call it blah and save it, you know, the parser freaks out and there's an error and there's an error message which doesn't make sense, but doesn't matter. It tells you there's an error. We, we call it simple because the file is called simple. Now, ah, oh crap. How do I close all that? That would be so, so cool if I could. Die, <laughs> die, 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 die. Great. You know, how many of you guys actually work with Eclipse in your life? Do you remember like how you have your project and there was like this one holy grail USB in your company because it was the only Eclipse that actually worked with all the plugins that were needed? Yeah. <sighs> Jesus Christ. This is why I use it. <laughs> All right, so, in, so this is just a spec, and this is what Lampert created the TLA plus for, just to write the specs. But his PhD students create the model checker, which we're going to use right now. So under models, you head on it with uh, like your right click or whatever you use on Emacs, or, or sorry, on Mac, and then you create a new model. You type a new model, and you give it a name which can be anything. I here go with just default model underscore one. And, and now, so it opens a window that we specify as a model so that the model checker can actually run it. So here we provide, he, he asks us for the initial state formula, which here we called it setup. And then he asked also for a uh, formula, that the next, next type formula, which here we called next step. I cannot zoom that in. I don't know how to do it. I think there's like a zoom functionality, but I, Maybe oh, during the break, I'll, I'll learn how to do that. I'll Google that. But that's already, if I co uh, comment and, or control, depending on your system, control save that, already that model doesn't have any errors. And now you can run it. There's a shortcut. I'll later on show you where the shortcut is. But for now, just click, click on this button, this green button, run. And you, if you click on it, it runs the specification. It will actually give us an error but uh, so let, first of all, let, let, let's, let's, let's look at the, so it, the model checker runs the specification. And if there are errors in the specification, it will tell us where the errors are. And here on the right hand side, we see exactly the counter example that allows us to, sh to find the error. So we should see that we start with initial, initial uh, state uh, with status in it. We go to running, and apparently that's an error. Well, it, it was, it's exactly doing what we were supposed, we were hoping this to be doing, but it's saying deadlock reached. If you go back to that, uh, to that model overview, so under model, there's a model overview. Do you guys over there? Like model, and there are three tabs, and you go to model overview. There's actually a checkbox called deadlock, because normally when you write distributed algorithms, it is not that unusual that the algorithm works infinitely. And you would like to see if it potentially terminates. And that's what TLC is telling us right now. This program terminated, and because you had that checkbox deadlocked, checked, you were hoping that it will not terminate. So let's uncheck that, because we don't really, we, we hope this for this program to terminate. And now we call run it, and then it runs it, and should give us, hopefully, no errors. All right. So one of the distinctions that you guys like to see, like what, what is important here? Because there are no counter example pop popping out on the right hand side, and it means everything went all right. You can actually even see how many, uh, how many distinct states the system found. And it only found two, which makes sense. We were in the init state, and we went then to status. Show of hands, people who were able to do that on your own machine. All right. People who tried to follow, but were not able to. Just yet. What were the problem? I've got Java 11. So you need a nightly build. I've got like the 158. I think also insane for some, I don't know, some model error. Okay. Can we try to look, look it up? 
can you pair and maybe for now pair with, and then we can work it out during the break. Do you need a break? Uh, can we meet here in uh, how much time do you need? Seven minutes? 20? It's going to be a lunch break at 12? Do you guys have enough mental strength to power through for the next 22 minutes? Let's, let's have a five minute break for, to fix the tables. All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, Solve the latest Java and all the SDKs, but then mm -hmm. try to pull it up. It's just not like coming up anywhere. So it makes them a little confused. And I think uh, you know everything allowed. So, so, but you run it and it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. I even download it through like Cast and it didn't, it didn't work. Um, so, right. So that, what is that? That is the downloaded thing, right? Yeah. And which one is the one that you want to run? Uh, you can just run that one. Yeah. And, uh, and it doesn't do anything. Yeah. That is, that is bizarre. It should actually pop out a window that allows you to. Uh, yeah. Start maybe. Yeah. So the way that I did it was straightforward. It just opens, pops up a window. You, you, you know, like normally in Mac, you just take the TLA, throw it into applications. Yeah, yeah. And it magically yeah. works. Oh, uh, maybe just let's let's restart it. But just like wait for a minute. What kind of Java version do you have? Uh, Eleven. I just downloaded the latest one. Okay. And that that delay was the late uh, the the nightly build, correct? Yeah, that was whatever was on the site. Yeah, but um. So on that side, let me go to Slack. You seen that? Like I posted this. Oh, I didn't see it in Slack. I haven't oh. the Slack yet. Oh, okay. So that's because we need to get to this part, right? To the nightly nightly builds. Did you download it from here? Uh, no. That's, that's, that's probably your issue. So you're going to go, just in case, open, um, when you log in, Google TLA Plus Toolbox GitHub, OK? And then we're going to let Yeah, I downloaded the one from GitHub. But yeah, but if you go to, check this out. If you go to. TLA plus toolbox GitHub, right? We go here. Come on. And there's a TLA plus. And then you went to releases. Look. Did, did you went to releases and you downloaded it, this from releases, that part? Uh, no, I went to, I just Googled TLA Plus and uh, came up with a website and it had a link to install it, so it took me to the GitHub and there was like a, a Mac version. Yeah, but GitHub. because there is a Mac version here, like if you click on it, but that's the latest release which doesn't work with latest Java. Um, so you know what, just maybe type TLA Plus Toolbox GitHub. Yeah. All right. Click open that repository Chili Plus here. Go to releases. And now scroll down a little bit slower and then a little bit more, a little bit more, and here. And now to Java One users, and there's a re recent toolbox nightly build. And you click on that, and you need to download from here for your Mac. So it's like a zipped, unsigned. I would go with. I just go with the zip, yeah. They not gotta move the tables for Yeah, I don't know. Like, do you guys want to move the tables somehow, like magically? We we did ours so that successfully now, so you I can maybe ask. Can you ask Kirtney maybe? I did. That was the one table that happened. Like can, can we, maybe because you can have maybe people on the on the sides of the table also. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. It's 
I could honestly, wait, wait a minute. I don't need that freaking table. I can just switch here and you guys can have this table for people sitting in the, you guys want it? Like have a, yeah. Does it? Oh, great. That's awesome. Wait for it. There you go. Oh, hey man. How's it going? Have you been here the whole time? Yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, not in this room. Though. Oh, okay. Yeah, gotta... Okay, I haven't seen this either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, magic. Mike stays here. Was that? And Mike stays here? Yeah, he's here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. Here. You guys good? Yeah. This side of the table? Okay? All right. Um, I guess, I was hoping this table moves, but it doesn't. All right, I can stand, don't worry. So, having that, let's try to do something more interesting to it. So one of the things that we would like to check, so this is still a very simple example. We still haven't reached that, that second step and we're gonna get to that. But I said that we will look for like, we will, when we run the model checker against our specification, we tend to check for two different things, the safety property and the liveness property. And we're gonna right now only focus on the safety property. So what safety means really is that I would like to assert some properties on all possible states my system can have. So whenever, whenever my system is wherever in, in this, you know, whatever the big area of possible state is, I would like to write some formulas, some invariants, some properties that are telling, however you got here, I don't care, this thing has to be valid in every possible state that you're ever gonna reach, right? So that's the safety part. And we can, we can write such a, such a property um, quite easily. So what is the, given that the specification that we have over here, what, what is, I guess, the only property that we could think of that kind of makes sense in this super simple example? I would say that the property might be that there are only, and I can write a function, function that will be called just possible statuses. Uh, if I make a typo in English, let me know. So it's either running or init or running, right? So, and so, uh, yes, yes, okay. So, I just created a function that returns a set that has two elements in it and running, correct? And now I can have, like TLA plus doesn't have a concept of type, there's no type system in TLA plus, but we can have an invariant, for example, that would check that the value status can only be an element of the set possible statuses. Right? Because it can either be in it or running, and that's it. We are not allowing anything else. Is that correct? So we can, we can write a formula that we will call, and Lampert calls it type OK. You can call it whatever you want, but I, I kind of like the name. And um, 
what we're saying here is we would like to say that status is n possible, oh, sorry, I'll move that here. And for, yeah, okay, so yeah, yeah, let me, that line, dash, 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 is only for like readability purposes. Also know that unfortunately, if I first define type OK and then passable statuses, TLA plus parser will freak out. So we have to have the order of, of the definition. Like, like, welcome to the 90s. This is how we program in the 90s. Um, so, so that's it. This, is this part so far makes sense? This, this keyword n, dash n, it looks, question. Thank you. That's okay, right? Um, so check this out. If we go back to toolbox and we have that specification and I know this, this keyword in is like looks weird. This isn't really how I see and in programming languages. We, the TLA spec, we try, we try to define specification using math symbols, uh, but I haven't seen dash n in math. Well, this is Lampert who created tech. So, so you have a, you go to file, you go to file and you create produce PDF version. And that gives you a spec, which is a little bit more Lamport-y like. So now you have that set up and you have that in, is this actually, that's actually a math symbol, right? Like for element being, a thing being element of a set. And also the end symbol from, if you, if you did math in high school, I guess. That, can everybody, so, oh, wait, wait for it. Not all of you guys can actually generate PDF. I forgot about it, there's like an optional, you need to have, you need to have installed. So don't, for this workshop, let, let me tell you one thing. You need to have the tool installed on your, on your system that if you go to preferences, there's a like TLA preferences and there's PDF viewer and that is PDF, PDF LADEC here. That's a thing you need to have installed to generate PDFs. It is not crucial for this workshop to gener generate PDFs. So let's not work, like if it, if it works for you, great. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. It's just part of configuration. Don't, let's just don't spend another 15 minutes on it, okay? But I just wanted to show you that we can actually generate a more readable specifications. And by the way, uh, the tool will also if you look at the files that were generated in the folder that was created for your folder, simple.toolbox, you will see also there's a, there's a tech uh, file available. So if you want to add it to your, to your bigger PDF or whatever, you can do it as well. But okay, we only right now define our specification that invariant, but we still haven't used it. So now we can do that. Is, who is following along? Okay, so in that model, so we go back to our model one, model one, and in our model over overview tab, there is a field called invariance. And we, we open it, and there's an add button, which we click, and now we type, type OK. So this is our invariant that we would like to check. So here we're saying type OK, which is that type OK, that we just wrote. So we're saying wherever you are, however you will get to those different states, always the status has to be an element of set and that set is either in it or running. So hopefully, if we one more time run this model, this invariant shouldn't break. We will in a minute extend our specification that so that it goes from init to running and then from running to stopped and just for fun we will not add the status stop to the list of possible values possible statuses and we should see 
the model checker exploding, right? Because it will reach a state in which status is something different than what it has in that list of possible statuses. Does that make sense? All right, can you guys survive the next 12 minutes to lunch? Keep, stay with me. I try to keep alive. I haven't my coffee yet. Um, so just, just be with me. I know. Okay, so oh, this is important. This workshop is unfortunately about syntax. It's the worst workshop that you can give because it's just boring. To get to the cool stuff, we need to power through the syntax, but the syntax is just big. But I promise we will get to the cool stuff. Hopefully that will make kind of sense for you guys, okay? But we have to go slowly through those steps. So, all right, so now we have, let, let's right now explore our possible states. So we might, for example, uh, and you can actually even see it here. We would like to have our net next state action should either be go from init to running, that's our first arrow, and then from running to stop, right? And this is what we can type in. So, so for now, let me just delete that. And we say that the next step formula is one of the two. So I can say either from in it to running or from running to in it now from in it to running we already know what that is can you write on your own from running to in, uh to stop sorry stop Stop. Can you write on your own from running to stop? Consider this, I don't know, exercise. It will look almost identical to what the init to running looks like. So how would that look like? I can pretty much, I guess, copy that line, right? And say, what in which, what has to be my current state? In what status we have to be in? Running, running right? So we say running. And what the next state status has to value has to be? Stop. And now. We remember that possible statuses should hold all the possible statuses that are in. But just for now, dot, dot, don't add that value stopped yet and let's just see what happens. So if I go back to that model and I refreshed it and now I run it, it gives me an error. And it gives me a counter example showing where, how, how can I get to that error. So it says you start with in it and then you go to, uh, to running and you, you, you see how you can even relate to the name of the function. So you can now read the init to running. But we see what happened to init to running. We went to status that is called running. And then lastly, the last step is running to stopped where our status is stopped. And then we have a, an error invariant type OK is violate, violated. Why that is? because stopped is not an element of all possible statuses. Does it make sense? So how can we fix that? We just add stopped, yep, exactly that. We just add stopped to that list of elements. You said you use this, you said you work for arching? Yeah, okay. arching. Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. I, I have it reserved for like the last hour, but if we don't make it, I'm more than happy to show it over lunch if you're interested. So I did that spec very recently and while well, still running, but so it took a little bit longer than I think it should, but, but I, I think the results were great. Like, like if you look at the errors that we found, they are just obvious. Like every senior developer should say like, this is obvious. 
but none of us did. So, um, okay. So now, if we run that, if we run that, we no longer should get any errors, and the model checker should say everything is just fine. We have lunch in seven minutes, so I want to show you one thing before we move on. There's a, a second tool that you might potentially have on your system. Uh, but it's not needed for this workshop. I have it installed. And if somebody is interested, oh, at the end of the lunch, we can actually install it if somebody is interested. But as I said, this is not crucial for the workshop, but just let me show you what you can get from that tool. So that tool is, is Graphis. It's like a visual, visualization tool for graphs. You define a graph in terms of text file, and then it just prints out my nice visualization of it. Uh, if you have it, if you had a dot executable uh, on your file system, you can actually um, tell that to toolbox. So in, in preferences, there would be um, in under general, I think, or where that is. The the other place. Yeah, the PDF. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, there is a specify dot command. And so you can point to executable of dot if you have that on your system. And as I said, it's not important for this workshop, but you can then on your model under the advanced option. So second tap under the advanced option, there's a, uh, there's a, um, I don't know, another tab called TLC options. You can click on that. And then at the very, almost at the very button, there is a visualize, visualize state graph after completion of model checking. If we click on that, and that is checked, now if I rerun this, this um, specification with the model checker, after, after the model checker is done, and surprisingly, sometimes for easy specs, it's slower than for the more complex ones, which I don't comprehend why that is, but you will, get, you will see that we get a next uh, tab so after the model checking results, there's a state graph. And what we actually get printed is what, what you guys saw. Can you go through what you checked again? I missed it. Uh, sure. So where you're on, on the model tab, there are, uh, there's a sub-tapped model overview. And the next to it one is called advanced options. And under advanced options, there is a TLC options. And... At the bottom, there is a visualized state graph after completion of model checking. Do you see that over, over here? So it's, it's a different place on the nightly. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, under, crap. Under model, under model overview tab, uh, there's advanced TLC ex execution options on that page. Oh, okay. oh, then I, I truly apologize because I don't run on the nightly. That, I was not aware of the Java 11 issue. I just learned about it, so. And what did you check again? Visualize state graph application But that will only work if you have the dot executable on your, on your file system, which you might have already on. And then when you run the model, you will get that nice visualization, which is, I guess, okay. If your specification is small for our workshop, that might be something interesting to see uh, for things production ready. It's just blob of states and tremendous amount of different hours going in different directions. It's so cool that it produces that because people spend time producing these graphs for production systems and it'd be cool if you could instead find the specification which produces this as a byproduct. Of it, it does and then also an interesting thing is you, you hear this tool visualize it but you actually get the dot dot text file which you can run then against for example you can remove the the details, you can remove the, um, the details of the names. You can, you can build clicks, right, in the graph visualization. So it, it still makes sense to, to build that, I agree. I'm just saying not use it in, in, in toolbox, I guess, because it's going to be huge. Uh, we, have, we have three minutes. So last thing I will, I will show you guys, um, and uh, this is something that I will use constantly. So let's say... Let's say I would like, let's say there was some other status, you know, blah here, right? For just for a minute, you don't have to type it, just, just maybe look at the screen. If there was blah, and, and I would have to say something here yet again about, you know, about blah, that blah is maybe, you know, 
blah is equal to, I don't know, something, and we want to have a new blah to equal to yet something else. Uh, that, that just builds this like very long line. So in TLA plus, uh, there is a, this concept of indent. So you can just say, we can hit enter here and you, we can start typing end and then you do, I don't know how to properly describe that, but you can write this, this specification means exactly the same. So we, uh, sorry, not like that. We can just say this. So we're saying this and that and that and that. And if you would like to have like, for example, or you would you put another indent. We will, I will show examples with more complex with that, but this is, this is how I'm going to write those specs from now on. So I'm just saying line after line. And, and yes, the, uh, most often the way you write specs, you, uh, as Harold said, we have those, we have those guards. So most often you first specify in the first lines of the formula, what are the variables in the current state and then in the next lines, what are the variables in the next state? That's how you read it. So this one enables the first state and the other tells us what is possible in the next state. Does it not return a function if you don't specify all the states? So for example, if you remove block from Very good question. It will explode, but we will, we will get to that. It, we always need to define it. And there's a reason also for that, why that is. And do they all get set only if all of them are true? Because they're all- Yes. It, it's telling you like how the next step has to look like. You're, you're, you're basically describing if I'm, allow, I'm only allowing this particular state to be legal. Only this, nothing else. Like you're very concrete about what is okay and what is not okay. But you could say status is in one of those possible things, right? What? Well, no, you could just say you could just use what we've already learned. There is an end. So I could, so let's remove that blah for a minute. Um, so if I would like to say, well, I could do the following. I could say status is equal to init or status, status is equal to blah, right? And it, this is legal. And I can also say, and so you, you could even, and this is where you would use that indentation. You could, you could do like or here and, and then or there. So that's and, 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 and the first and is considered of two ors. So this is legal, but you could also say something which we all already learned. So you could say status is in and now you're saying what kind of steps are possible. So that is also legal syntax. We are, you're, you're only answering to questions. What the variables in the current state have to adhere to the rules, which, which you write like in logic, I said in C theory, like this is true. And the same for the variables in the next state. However you write it is your, your call. But that, this is legal. All right, I think we have lunch. So I see you guys in an hour. I'm gonna be here earlier. So if you have questions, something is not working, this is the right moment. Or you have questions which is just afraid to ask in the group. This is the right moment, like 15 minutes before, before one to ask me those questions. That, that's okay?